okay? Good evening and welcome to the third and last in our series for this uh, season of the Vegetarian Way Cooking Demonstrations. Who's enjoyed the demonstration so far this, this last couple of weeks? Great. I see some faces. Well, obviously I wasn't here last week, but I do see some faces I haven't seen before. I'd like to welcome you here if this is your first time. And we'd like to welcome you and trust you gain a, a blessing from our um, time together tonight and have some good uh, recipes to take home with you and apply straight away to, to a, towards a healthier, happier life. Well, as we do beforehand, we'd like to give thanks to our Creator who has given us all the benefits in nature for our good. And so I'd like to ask for those who are able to bow their head as we ask for a blessing. Dear Father in Heaven, we thank you so much for your great mercy and love to us for providing for all of our needs, Lord, uh, the physical needs, the material needs and our spiritual needs. And we thank you for uh, the privilege that we have and the opportunity to be here tonight. We ask you to bless our, our uh, meeting. May you bless the demonstrations and help us to gain a deeper appreciation of how we can use the products of the earth that you provided for us for our best health, that we might live a healthy, happier and long lives. And so we thank you for these blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Last time I spoke, who remembers what I was talking on two weeks ago? It was the second part of what I had started back in, uh, earlier in the year, and that was, sorry? Yeah, cholesterol was talking about, wasn't it? Cholesterol and how, um, and what's the issue with cholesterol? Or let's just remind ourselves, what would the issue or the risk factor, cholesterol is a, is a high risk factor for what? Heart disease, yeah. And so we were looking at hindering heart disease, how we can hinder it. And as from the list of um, things that uh, are risk factors, you can see there that the high blood cholesterol level is the highest on that list there. Also saturated fat intakes and a number of other things here. But I was just focusing uh, last time on the cholesterol and some of the things that we can use in nature to reduce our, or to... Um, that, that have a counter effect of the cholesterol in our diets. Now, what is the single greatest risk factor, is, 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 as I mentioned already, for heart disease? A high blood cholesterol level. So we wanted to look at some natural solutions to reducing our cholesterol levels. Uh, we can take tablets, um, and uh, for cholesterol, uh, and I know this is not related to cholesterol, but it is to, related to um, high blood pressure, because I'll touch on that at the end as well, some things for high blood pressure, because they are also, or that is also a risk factor for, for uh, heart disease, which is hypertension. Um, but it's funny, my father, I was just visiting him yesterday, he's, uh, in, I've just come back from Brisbane today, uh, just flew back, but uh, my father, he's 86, he has... Um, He's always had high blood pressure, hypertension, and so he's always, you know, visiting his doctor, getting the tablets, but he's pretty good with his diet. He's not a vegetarian totally, but anyway, he's got his other ways of dealing with things. But with the blood pressure tablets, he has, one, uh, he has uh, a couple of his tablets, but when he has the tablets, um, his uh, fluid builds up on his ankles. And so I'm like... Um, Dad, Dad you've got you to get, you get that fluid checked out on the ankles there. Well, he asked the problem. I take the tablets, the fluid uh, uh, comes up. But then if I stop the tablets, the uh, fluid goes down, but my pressure goes up. You know, so, <laughs> so he's like, it's like a balance. So what I've decided, he recommended two per day. So what I've done is I've done one one day and a half another day, and then <laughs> and I sort of keep it in balance, you know. <laughs> So he'll, he'll take a tablet till the, till the, till the um, flu builds up and he stops half a tablet, goes back down a little bit. So he's sort of balancing that way. Well, that's through the tablets, right? I mean, we can play around with tablets, but I'd rather do something that's, that's natural, you know, that, and I can enjoy doing without the stress and worry. And that's what we want to look at briefly tonight. As you know, for those who haven't been here, what we uh, tend to do, is, or what we have been doing, is we go through a little health talk 
about 20 minutes, and then after that, we'll go through it for an hour with the demonstrations, just to fill you in for those who haven't been here. Yet. So, I'm sorry about that because I've gone straight into it tonight with the talk. But that's what we're going to do here. So, and then, really, what it's about then is taking home the knowledge we've gained from, the demos, from this uh, presentation here and applying it through the recipes that we take home with us. So, that's what it's all about. So, how can we lower cholesterol naturally? I touched on it last time, a couple of things. Who can remember some of the foods that were that would counteract the cholesterol levels. Who can remember that from last week or two weeks ago? Yeah, leafy greens, broccoli, yeah, was one. I think something starts with P. It's one of my favourite fruits, grows in Queensland abundantly. Pineapple, yeah, pineapple. And there was something else that gives the colour to tomatoes, carrots and all that, Okay. Yeah, so the so the, the uh, any any green or, or sorry red or yellow uh, fruits or vegetables they have that um, I forget what it's called now <laughs> just just a brain fog here for a minute but it's a carotenoid which uh, also um, affects the uh, bl blood cholesterol in a positive way lowering it so that's what we want to keep that in mind so just to recap here. Cholesterol is not a bad thing if you don't have too much of one type of cholesterol and too little of another type. So the, the two types of cholesterol, what's called high-density uh, lipoprotein, HDL, and low-density lipoprotein. Now, HDL is the good cholesterol. So that's the high-density stuff. The bad cholesterol is low-density uh, lipoprotein, LDL for short. We need both in our system. It's not like you, you, know, you do, with, do it away with one and you're going to be okay. No, you need both. But when one gets out of hand, when the LDL um, gets out of hand, it has issues, has problems. Our liver produces most of the cholesterol we need in our diet, and the, uh, rather, in, we need in our bodies. The rest comes from uh, our diets. Foods like meat, eggs, uh, cheese, you know, animal-based products like that. So there's, there's no cholesterol, absolutely no cholesterol in plant-based foods. That's interesting. So the more plant-based foods you have, filling up on that, rather than the, the um, cheeses, the dairies, the, the eggs, the meats, you're going to straight away have a benefit of having uh, foods that are going to lessen the intake of cholesterol into the system. All right, so that's to keep this in mind. To give you an idea, this is kind of a, 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 what it looks like, you know, an illustration of what it looks like with a normal artery. You've got your blue HDL, which is your good uh, cholesterol, and the yellow is the bad. You can see there the low cholesterol, you know, we've we got low, um, you know, it's, it's plenty of room there for the blood to flow through. Um, with your normal You've got uh, a moderate amount, uh, sorry, you know, you can see the blue there is not, is um, sort of interspersed with the yellow, probably a little bit less of the blue than there is of the yellow, the HDL versus the LDL, but then with the, uh, the moderate level of um, cholesterol in the, in the bloodstream, that's where you're seeing there a much greater concentrations of the LDL versus the HDL. And of course, when you're in trouble is where you have that fourth illustration, which is the high levels of the LDL. And so look how much room is there, there is there for the blood to flow through when your levels of the LDL are high. And that leads to, that's like a plaquey, that cholesterol is like a plaquey substance that eventually will harden over time. And that's what we call hardening of the arteries, which leads to all kinds of problems, primarily stroke and uh, heart failure. So this is what we want to avoid. So I want to look at some foods now. I'm going to uh, two or three foods that lower this directly. What is one food that you, you, you probably love to eat when it's ripe, but you would never dream of eating it if it was not ripe? But you usually, sell it, you usually can buy it at the supermarket, and often it comes half ripe in the supermarket, and the shelf is full of them. Bananas, that's it. Yeah, bananas. So green bananas, 
you go to the supermarket and often they're, they're picked like this and they put them in the, in the uh, fridge, they gas them up, turn them yellow and put them on the shelf. <laughs> okay, but believe it or not, green bananas, can you eat green bananas? Yep. Who's eating green bananas? I mean, as a, as a, as a, as a prepared meal. Yes? Yeah. I know I had a, 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 um, a lady who came from El Salvador and one day she, she brought these uh, green bananas. They'd, she'd boil them up and she'd, and she'd wrap them in uh, papaya leaves and, uh, and uh, you open it up and there's the boiled up, toma- um, boiled up banana in the papaya leaf and then you eat that. And you know what it's like eating? Potato. <laughs> It's very starchy, very starchy, very little sweetness to it at all. And so that's because that's what banana is in its unripe state. It's, it's 80% or more of starch. And what happens over time is the, as the banana ripens, the starch turns into sugar. Yeah, and that becomes your simple sugars that, you, that makes the bananas taste too weak when they're ripe. So the thing about green bananas, because they're very uh, starchy, when they're green, um, they, have, they have a more resistance to breakdown in the system. And so if you're suffering from diabetes, for example, eating green bananas, you still get the same minerals and vitamins and everything that's in the green and the yellow. It doesn't matter which one you eat. They'll still have the same amount of nutrients as such. But eating the green banana has a, a, has a low glycemic effect on the blood sugar level. So, you, so it takes longer to break down and therefore you know, you, you, your uh, blood sugar levels remain uh, lower. So that's uh, a positive thing about the green bananas. Um, they also are a good source of pectin and they can also improve your digestive health in what way? Well, The resistant starch that's in the green banana, instead of being broken down in your intestines, what happens is that starch makes its way all the way through to the lower intestine where there's friendly bacteria. And the friendly bacteria take that, that uh, resistive starch and with another uh, substance, they mix it together and they ferment it and they make, uh, they make uh, energy for the cells in the colon. And so it's good in that sense. So it can have a beneficial effect on the colon. It's good for the bio, bio, um, you know, your biobacteria in your gut. And it's a, it's a prebiotic effect, in, in other words. So what they're doing, they make a, a short-chain fatty acid, which is the um, energy source for the, for the cells in the, col- in the colon. So that's some benefits of green bananas. And the fact that it's um, high in um, the starch... It's, uh, it's considered to be a high fibrous um, product, the green banana we're talking about here. Now, fiber from, now they did some tests with this when, on cholesterol. Fiber from unripe bananas, when fed to rats, along with high doses of cholesterol, dramatically counteracted the expected increase in total serum cholesterol. Rats fed only cholesterol had high LDL cholesterol counts of 126 milligrams per 100 mils. When they added unripe bananas to the diet, it caused the rat's bad cholesterol level, the LDL, to fall to 46 milligrams per 100 mils. That's huge, isn't it? Huge reduction. So the banana treatment also, interestingly, also increased the HDL cholesterol by approximately 30%. So more than half the bad cholesterol and 30% increase of the good cholesterol by the consumption of the green bananas in those rats' diets. Just to give you an example there of a study where we can see the effects it can have on cholesterol. Okay, so that's for bananas, green bananas. Another natural food we have that can help lower the cholesterol is barley. Now, barley... Um, there was a study done to test the effects of 
uh, where the barley as a soluble fibre source would change the risk factors for heart disease. If you, in other words, you've taken uh, the you know, barley as a source of fibre. And so what they found in this study was that, um, that barley would benefit, the barley, it can, although it contains high amounts of soluble fibre, it's not consumed as extensively as oats. So now 18 moderately hypercholesterol men, men with high cholesterol, or 28 to 62 year olds, consumed a controlled uh, equilibrium diet of 30% fat, 55% carbohydrate, and 15% protein, and less than 300 milligrams of cholesterol for two weeks, followed by a diet with about 20% of energy replaced with uh, the brown rice whole wheat, half of barley, and half brown rice whole wheat or barley. And for five weeks, uh, they, they carried on this, this um, diet. Now, what happened is the actual effects were that the LDL was lower after the low or medium high soluble fibre diets and the HDL was higher. So again, just through the fibre that was in those barleys and oats, that increased the HDL, which is the good cholesterol, and lowered the bad cholesterol in your diet. One other... Um, so basically, su the summary is that increasing soluble fiber through consumption of barley in a healthy diet can reduce cardiovascular risk factors. Who likes barley? Yeah? That's good. Is there something called pearl barley? Is there something called pe pearl barley? Yeah. Yeah. I don't like pearl barley. <laughs> You've got to add some sweetener to it, I find. But it's good for cholesterol. Good for cholesterol, okay? For lowering the bad cholesterol, increasing the good cholesterol. Another natural so uh, source of uh, lowering cholesterol is carob pulp. Now, carob pulp is a byproduct of the fruit processing industry when it's processing the carob. It's composed of macro and micronutrients, carbohydrates, vitamins, minerals, and other uh, properties that are good for the diet. Um, the pulp of the carob pod is about 48 to 56% sugars and 18% cellulose and hemicellulose, which is going to be the fiber that's unable to be broken down. Okay, so a study was done that showed uh, the, li the lipid-lowering effect of a carob pulp preparation rich in insoluble dietary fibre. And in this study, 47 vol uh, volunteers with moderately high cholesterol uh, consumed about 15 grams of carob per day in three products, breakfast cereal, fruit muesli bars, and powdered drink, as a supplement to their regular diet. After four weeks, there was a reduction of 7.1% in the average total cholesterol, and 10.6% in LDL cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol, was noted. And there were respective decreases after six weeks with 7.8% and 12.2%. So who likes carob? Anyone, who's, who, hasn't, who's tried, who hasn't tried carob? Anyone haven't tried it? We do, have, we do sell it downstairs, so if you want to try some out, the shops open after the meeting tonight downstairs. So don't forget, tonight is how much? 10% off. Yeah, 10, <laughs> every time you have a cookie demo, 10% off. Another product that we'd also sell in the shop downstairs, and this is not a promo for the shop, but it just coincidentally, <laughs> is lecithin. Now, lecithin is, all, is a mixture of... Um, it's a type of fat that's found in various foods, including egg yolks, soybeans, sunflower seeds, and fish. It's a mixture of fats that have important functions in the cells, so it's really good for uh, choline production, which is good for your mood levels in your brain, um, your clear thinking. Uh, if, you, you know, if you're going into it, um, you want to get mental focus, you need to uh, have a clear... Uh, choline is good for that. And so, so lecithin is, is important to help uh, produce those things in our, in our, um, di in our bodies. Now... Um, when it comes to lowering cholesterol, 
32 people with elevated blood lipids, which is blood fats, were given uh, 10,500 milligrams of commercial lecithin for 30 days. There was an, they experienced an average decline in total cholesterol of 33%, and an average decline in their total tri triglycerides of 33%. Okay, so that's the, the bad fats, all right? And so LDL decreased by an average of 38%, and HDL, so that's the bad cholesterol, decreasing again, 38%, and the good cholesterol, the HDL, increasing by 46%. And so researchers concluded that lecithin should be administered for the prevention and treatment of atherosclerosis. That's interesting, isn't it? So there you go. Um, So looking at these here, so these, these are some of the uh, effects so of decreasing on, of cholesterol in the body by these, uh, these articles of, of, of food. Lecithin, 33%, flaxseed, 9%, psyllium husk, 15%, uh, carrots, 11% decrease, celery, 9% decrease, uh, globi artichoke, 15% decrease, coconut oil and almonds also have a decrease. We touched on that earlier uh, in, in previous presentations. So these are just some of the foods that can help lower your cholesterol, and you can apply right now in your diet when you go home if you do have that, those problems. Uh, just in finishing, very quickly, I just want to touch on, because another risk factor we looked at was high blood pressure, and I've touched on this already earlier, but some of the foods that can help with our high blood pressure, hypertension, are what? Another one that I mentioned it before, that you best eat it together rather than you, you eat it and someone else not eating it, <laughs> which is garlic, all right? Because if someone else eating the garlic when you're not eating it, <laughs> I'd find that difficult. So eating the garlic together, that's good for, your low, for lowering your blood pressure. Celery is, celery seed extract, cooked onions, oats, water, watermelon and bananas. They all help to lower your blood pressure. So these are just some things that we can do to help hinder heart disease. And we're doing that through the vegetarian way. So thank you very much. I trust that you've gained something to take home with you tonight and apply in your diet at home to help improve your health. May God bless you and thank you very much. How are we going for time? I'm a bit early tonight. Any questions? <laughs> How are they going out there? Can we just check if they're ready? Thanks, Joe. Yes. Yes. Me is a porridge. A porridge, and it it was without salt and without sweetening, so it was a bland porridge. And that, that but yeah, you're right. Now in a, a pearl barley soup, I do like yeah because you because you've got the other flavors with it. It, it really really really. Um, yeah, yeah, it helps it, helps it uh, it's very palatable that way, yeah. So, so you can um, make it palatable. Now, I think that's about what these demonstrations are about too. It's like, you know, when I used to, um, I was, my mother was a vegetarian, and so until I was about five years old, we were brought up vegetarian. Our family situation changed. Mum and Dad, unfortunately, they um, broke up, their marriage broke up. Um, I ended up living with my dad, who was not vegetarian, and so we ended up eating meat. <laughs> and I never liked meat, except for rissoles <laughs> and uh, uh, mince, yeah, mince, you know, min, yeah, mince rissoles. He'd make them mince, and, but I'd, but anything else, oh, so so. One thing I didn't like eating was brains, ox tongue, and tripe. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I just couldn't, I, you know, I just like, lamb's brains, oh, uh, yeah, don't want to eat, I don't want to eat anything that someone's been thinking with, you know, so, it's not, but that's, uh, but, um, when I be, was 15, I had the, the um, freedom to choose my own diet, now, I didn't have all the knowledge that I have now, but I just knew I wasn't going to eat meat. I'd go, now this was in the 80s, and the big thing was sprouts. So I'd get my sprouts, 
go to school, you sprout your carrots and your, and your lettuce. And uh, my mates would say, oh, here, here comes Chapman with his rabbit food. <laughs> and that's what it seems to be like. But, you know, I think what you're finding out through these presentations is, is, is that vegetarianism doesn't have to be that sparse, right? We can make it so nourishing, so palatable, that people can't even tell that it's a vegetarian meal. They think, wow, that was so nice. And that's what these demonstrations are all about, making vegetarianism something that's palatable and delicious and attractive for you to go home and prepare for yourself and that your friends can come over, taste it and feel, that was really great. Do you know what? In my, uh, I shared this once with you once before, I don't know, but I'll share it again for those who haven't heard. I used to work in recruitment and on one occasion we had to go and recruit some truck drivers up in a mount, uh, mine in Mount Isa. We went up there with a client, my boss, myself, and the client. And on the way to the restaurant for dinner, my boss starts laughing and, and nudging the client. He says, well, because we went to down to town, the only place we could find was the, was the I think it was called the, the Bucking Bronco Steakhouse in Mount Isa there. It's something like that it's called. It's, uh, those in Mount Isa will know what I'm talking about. And I walked in thinking, and they said, he's, he's nudging the, these clients saying, guess what? He's a vegetarian. <laughs> we walked in, they gave us the menu, and you know, you wouldn't believe it, on the menu were four vegetarian dishes. And I ordered the, the uh, chickpea pie in Mediterranean sauce. That sounded nice. And do you know, that was the nicest vegetarian meal I've ever had in a steakhouse <laughs> in my life. <laughs> It's beautiful. And I, gave my, I was so impressed I gave my compliments to the chef. You know? And that's what vegetarianism can be like. So with all that now, I'd like to invite our presenters tonight for the demonstrations. And who is up first? Me. Is Tanya. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tanya. And what have we got tonight is... Who's got the... You all got recipe sheets? Anyone doesn't have one? You should at the tables there. So we're going to go through tonight. Tanya's going to kick us off with vegan chickpea sandwich filling, talking about chickpeas. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's for you. Just get this. Good evening, everyone. Oh, that was a bit sour. Okay, it's like, oh, you know, it's a hot day. I've been. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Ah, that's better. All right. So, on our menu tonight, we have quite a few different. It's not a theme, so it will be a few different things that will be demonstrated to you tonight. But we're going to start off with this vegan chickpea sandwich filling. Now, this filling is more um, for those that, that love their tuna. It's supposed to sort of be a resemblance to a tuna filling for your sandwich. So um, it's very straightforward. Now, we had some, if you remember the recipes from last week, Lydia was using the chickpea liquid from the, the chickpea. And so this we thought, look, we need to show something where we're actually using the chickpeas because we had a lot of chickpeas left over. And we thought, all right, well, let's show them this one. Okay, so what I've got here is one can, it's one can of the chickpeas. And what I've done, oh, I'll just grab a spatula at the end. Thank you. Very straightforward. This won't take long at all. So what I've done is you can either do this in your food processor or you use your potato masher. Now you don't want, if you're doing it in your food processor, you don't want to over process it, otherwise it comes, becomes mushy. So um, I've just, I actually used the potato masher for this one and I've just roughly mashed it up. So already you can see that that's almost like a resemblance to, to your tuna. Now, to that, I've got here one red onion, 
and I've finally diced that up. I'm just going to add that straight in. I've got here, now, my apologies, this was not on your recipe sheet. So you can, or if you want to, or you don't like celery, you can leave it without. But what I've done here is I've got one um, large celery stick and I've finely diced it. So I'm going to add that, and that really is more for texture. So I'll add that straight in. So you can add that onto your, your recipe sheet, because I've totally forgotten to, to add that one on. Here I've got a tablespoon of dill, fresh dill or dried. It's, if you don't like dill, just leave it out. Totally up to you. Then to that, I've got salt. Now, again, up to you how much, uh, how little or how much salt you want to add into it. Um, it's just to your taste, according to your taste. So I'm just going to add a little bit. Here I have, um, this is what will give it sort of that fishy type taste. It's nori sheets or for those, you know, like your sushi sheets, um, you can get them freely available at the supermarket. Um, I've just finally um, chopped this up and I'm going to add that straight in. If you don't like that fishy smell or taste to it, please, by all means, just leave it out. And then what I have here, is I find that this is my favorite out of the vegan mayos that you'll find at the supermarkets. It is the Hellman's vegan mayo. And this one is, um, I've got there that there is half a cup. So you just add half a cup straight in. And then to that, Last but not least is lemon juice. And that gives it a bit of a, a tang. So I've got one, that, that's a lot of lemon juice from one lemon. So you just add that straight in. I might not add all of it. And then once again, it's totally up to you how much or, or how little you want of that in there. And then we just mix it up. Now, I for one don't know what tuna tastes like. So, you know, it's like, okay, um, it's, it's not something that I can go look, it tastes like it or, or not. So, um, but I have had some that have tried it and that have, have had tuna in their diet or, or fish in their diet and they're like, look, it tastes good. So, and that's basically it. Mix it all through together. It will then look like that. And you just spread that freely onto a sandwich um, with your favorite, like I've got there on the recipe sheet, just different ideas of how to make up your sandwich. But by all means, you can just have that on your sandwich on its own. Um, or you could add other, other things like um, just the examples that have been given on the recipe sheet. And that is basically your vegan chickpea sandwich filling. They're going to bring out some, some samples for you. So you can try and then, for those of you that have tried tuna, like by all means, just tell me what it, whether it actually resembles it or not. Um, but I, I find that it's, it's something that's easy and especially when you're using, uh, like if, for instance, you've used the, the chickpea water and you don't know what to use the chickpeas to, this is something that's, that's delicious and you could sort of add that, um, make up something just to have a filling sandwich or something for your lunch. So they're coming out now with the, the samples. I hope you enjoy.
What do you all think? Yes, so it's, yeah, is it a thumbs up, thumbs down, or yeah, sideways thumbs? Or okay, good. I've got some thumbs up. Very good. Just something simple, something easy, something to use leftover chickpeas to. All right, well, that's it from me. We're going to pass it on to Lydia, who's going to show you the next recipe. Just in here. Good evening, everybody. How are you? Good to see you all and so good to see some faces that I know back again. Good to see the new faces and good to see that you came back from last week. <laughs> so welcome, everybody. Um, we're going to do a spicy tofu. So I hope that you like spice and if not, just have take all the stuff off the top and just have a little bit. <laughs> In the middle, it's not too spicy, it's a sauce that's spicy. Okay, if you just bear with me while I just get myself organized here. For the spicy tofu, we need to use a hard tofu. So, um, just want to get all this organized. Okay, I think I've got too many of these things here, but never mind, I'll get there. So how is it? Is it do it? Delicious? There you go. Now you know what to do for your next picnic. Okay. I'm going to set this up. Actually, I might put this over here because we've got to do something else first. I've got two trays for this. <laughs> Okay, I'm using a block of tofu, just a firm tofu. And what we're going to do, we're going to, first of all, we're going to fry the tofu. But prior to frying, we're going to do a, um, a corn flour, coated in corn flour, because the corn flour will help it to be nice and crisp. Let's pop that here. Okay, now I've already cut the tofu so that it won't take so long. We're going to really try to finish on time today and um, it's easy to run a little bit late. Okay, what I'm going to need is uh, about a quarter cup of corn flour but it doesn't have, to, oops, doesn't have to be measured. It's just so you can coat your tofu. It may take less, it may take a little bit more, it doesn't matter. Just put a couple of spoons and then keep adding to it as you use it. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do with this tofu, tofu block, I'm going to dry it. So I'm going to place each of these slices onto some paper toweling. Okay, just a double sheet, double lot or two, three sheets of paper toweling. And that way I'll press some of the water out from this. Oh, hello, I can hear a little one. Can I, is that what I can hear, little one? How beautiful, welcome. Okay, I'm just drying the tofu. Sometimes when you put, um, leave the water on, when you put it in the oil, it'll splatter. Plus, we're going to coat this with a little bit of that corn flour so it'll give that crispiness when you, when you fry, it, fry it. And while I'm doing this, actually, I should have had the oil on. Um, Okay, I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on in a, in a pan. Whatever oil you want, this one is rice bran oil. But you can just put whatever oil you prefer. If you want to do it in olive oil, you can as well. And I'm just taking the moisture out of this, these tofu slices. So I've got just the moist, moist paper towel. 
And now I'm going to roll it into the, just coat it in the corn flour, as such. Each piece, oops, corn flour goes everywhere, doesn't it? It's one of these things that just go everywhere. So just that will help to absorb the rest of the moisture as well as make it crispy when you fry it. Now, who made anything of the things that we have um, demonstrated so far? Oh, lovely. Good job. What did you make? The first week? Yeah, which one? Oh, yes, yes. The digestive biscuit, the, the sweet. Beautiful. Did your family enjoy it? That's good. Anyone else? <laughs> That's okay. Don't be. Oh, someone else did. Very good, Max. Yeah, what did you make? Oh, lovely. That's really lovely. Good job. Okay, and I'll just place this into the, the hot oil. Now, somebody asked me, can I bake it? You can, but it won't be as crisp. It won't turn out as crispy, but you can bake it if you want to. So try to fit everything in that fry pan as possible. And this mess is just going to be a decoration for the rest of the night. Just think it's special paint. <laughs> okay. So our strips are getting ready. And this is so quick and easy, you'd be surprised. Once these, are, these strips are ready, I'll put it up again now. Um, the sauce is very, very quick. You're just going to put everything in a pot, just brown it, and then put your tofu in it, and it's, you'll, be, you'll be surprised how quick it'll go. So I'll just bring this over here. Sorry, Tanya, un yeah, underneath in my box, there's a, a little dish that says, bless this house. Bless. Thank you. Okay. It's not quite ready. Now, I'm using vegan margarine. You can use olive oil. You can use... Um, vegan butter, you can use any of the oils that you prefer, um, but th this one is Natalex that I'm using, it's the butter flavoured Natalex, and um, it just gives it a little bit more body, okay, but if you prefer to use olive oil or anything else, it, it won't change the actual thing, okay, it's not going to taste bad. We're getting there. This doesn't have to look extremely um, brown or anything like that. It, it is nice to have a little bit of colour like this, but it doesn't have to be brown because once you dip it into the sauce, that will give it a lot of colour. Okay, we're nearly done with this. Beautiful, thank you. I'll be needing this in a minute. Okay, I can take these bits out. Actually, what you can do, and what I should do, is just get a little piece of... Um, a couple of bits of handy paper and put it underneath and put these on top and it'll just help soak some of that oil. Okay. I think this is almost done. Okay. All right. 
Right, now, I've got to get rid of this oil, but this is hot, Tanya. We need a tea towel, please. Do you want to just take it out, please? And then um, I'll need that so I can do the rest of the... Okay, we're just going to... If there's another fry pan there, that would be good. Thank you. I was looking for a fry pan big enough to use, but I couldn't find one. I should have brought some from home. They're only smaller ones, and you can't fit them all in the fry pan. So that's ready now to put into your sauce. And that is going to be very, very fast. I'm just going to put in um, the margarine. I'm going to add the ginger, the garlic, and then the sauces. And mix it up and put the tofu in it. You'll see how quick it goes, very fast. Um, I'm also using uh, teriyaki sauce. Now, look up your ingredients on the teriyaki sauce because some of them are not vegan and some are. So, and some have alcohol and some don't. So this particular brand is okay. So I'm going to use this today. And I'm using so, a, a hot chili sauce, um, any of the chili sauces that you like, or if you don't like the heat, don't put it on. Just leave it plain. Thank you so much. Oh, you found one? Yes. Okay, we'll try and fit those ones in there. Thank you, Tanya. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'll add my margarine, one ta heaped tablespoon. So just dip it in and just take out what comes out. And your... Um, about a five centimetre piece of ginger, and it's done in Juliet slices. Remember how Vivian taught you how to do that with the carrot? Well, I did the same, actually, my daughter. She says, make sure you tell them, Mum, that it took me a couple of hours to do <laughs> because she had to do heaps for the, uh, all the samples. She said, this afternoon, it took me a couple of hours to do all that. <laughs> and four big cloves of garlic. You just saute that a little bit before you add your sauces into it. And I'm going to put one, I'm only going to put one tablespoon of the chilli, but if you like chilli, you can actually put a lot more, whatever you like. Help. Taste it as you go, maybe start with a little bit and then taste it and see, you can always add it later. Okay, so I'm just going to start off with a tablespoon and five tablespoons of the teriyaki sauce. Five. Okay. And I'm going to also add some green shallots. Cut up two shallots, leave a little bit, ooh, leave a little bit out to, um, to garnish, leave a little bit raw to garnish it, and the rest you can just cook it up. Now that's almost ready for my tofu, so how quick was that? And just uh, about a quarter of a cup of water. Okay. And my sauce is ready. So I just have to get that. Um, just hang on a second, I'll just, yeah, just for a minute. Um, just put, put it down into it and make sure that it's, you know, sort of got a lot of the, a lot of this, the ingredients that are underneath, that it really dips it in. So it coats it. Yeah, this one's not quite big enough to put these in, but. Um, yeah. Let me just clean this up. I was looking for a pot that would take. You can actually get about, depending on your tofu, some of them you can get 10 slices, some of them you can get nine, and some of them you get eight. It just depends on the tofu. But some of them are taller, some of them are shorter. Depends on the brand. Let me see if I can somehow dump this into here. 
We've got one more in. Maybe we'll get it in. Okay. All right. So now we'll turn them over and that's what it looks like. Okay? It looks really delicious. It's got that lovely coating around it. Once you turn it over, you just let it sit for about a couple of minutes just to get the caramelization done and then you're ready to serve it. While it's nice and hot, it's really lovely. So what you could do, if you're having a dinner party, you could actually have all your ingredients cut and ready um, and just do this last step just before you serve it out and it's really nice when it's really fresh. So I think I'm ready with this, Tanya. Thank you so much. I'll leave this over here. Can I substitute? Yep. You can. Yep. yep. The cayenne pepper. You can actually put cayenne pepper instead of chili or any of the chilies that you like. Yeah. Okay, so this is done. So we just put it on a, a plate. Let me just get this right. Where's the camera? Oh, hello. <laughs> that's the camera there. Okay, that's what it looks like. Okay, and we'll take that out. And I don't know what you like, but I like this on plain rice because it does have a little kick and the rice just gives it that little bit of plainness to it and it's quite lovely. Okay. Um, I'm going to excuse my fingers. They were made before forks, eh? <laughs> okay, so there it is. And then just get the sauce that's left over and just put it nicely on the top. And then garnish with what, whatever other things you like. Today I'm just going to garnish it with some fresh shallots. You can actually buy fried onion, dry fried onion in a packet. That looks nice when, you, when, you, um, when you're garnishing things. So I'm just going to put shallots and just a little bit of the onion on top. This is just dried onion flakes and a few peanuts just on top. And that's it. And you're ready. Who wants it? <laughs> okay, thank you. That's, that's for me for now. I'll be back later. Um, we're going to do a few other things. So I'll pop that here and you can have a look at it later. Okay, show the camera. Can you see it? As long as it doesn't slip off. Yeah? Okay. If you don't like the heat, just eat the rice. <laughs> Thank you. I think Tanya will be back now um, with something special for you. So I'll just go and give her a hand. How are we doing? Here we go. We have to wire you up. You take that. Okay. Oops. Okay. Yep. It's done. Yep. Just leave it there.
I'm getting a few coughs in there. That spice is hitting, isn't it? It's... All right. Who's enjoying it? It's good? Yeah. Good stuff. That's excellent. <laughs> Very good. All right. Well, what I'm going to demonstrate to you next will take the heat out of it, I think. So what I've got here is a Brazilian lemonade. Okay? Sounds a bit, mm, okay. But it's very, very simple and very, very refreshing. It's got to be good. It's Brazilian. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what you'll need... Okay, so what you're going to need is two good sized limes. Scrub them well, clean them well, because you're going to be using everything. So skin and all, I've cut them into quarters and then straight into the blender. Don't be afraid, it's okay. It'll be all good. Okay, into that, I've got here one and a half cups of water. And to that, now some people will sort of look at the ingredients to this and there is a drink that um, has very similar, but this is, this is a very, um, let's just say clean type drink. Now to this, as my sweetener, I'm adding a half, oh, well, a third of a cup of the vegan condensed milk. If it's this one, it's the vegan condensed coconut milk. Um, so it, it was used in last week's drink, and it's also being used in this week's drink. All right. Oh, oh, yeah. To that, I'm going to add some mint. Now, you can add a little or more depending on what your preference is. I'm just going to add a couple of sprigs of that to it. And that's basically it. Now, to this, you might like to add a little bit of ice if you want to, but it doesn't necessarily need it because it will be served on ice. And just bear with me. now. This is where the catch is with this drink. Because you're using everything of the lime in here, you do not want to over blend it. So when you're blending it, I'd say a maximum of 10 seconds, and that's it. All you're wanting to do is for everything there to actually be mixed up or cut up, infused, and then you just cut it off because the last thing you need is to over blend it and for the drink to become bitter, okay? so. That's just something to keep in mind. So you can do this with whatever blender you have. It should work well. Now, I've got a, a sieve here. Now, what I'm going to do is just strain that. This is great on a warm day like it was today, or when you're having, oh, it's very refreshing, absolutely. We were thrilled when we were cooking this afternoon and she comes in with a tray and we all had a glass each. Oh, it was just, it was so nice. It was so beautiful, so refreshing. We really enjoyed it. Thank you, Tanya, for thinking of us. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I hope you had one too, because you were slaving away today. <laughs> oh, that's all right. I think by the time I trialed this drink, I have had a bit too many, so. All right. 
Is it popular in Brazil? Well, I haven't had it in Brazil. I don't know why they call it Brazilian, so I'll get the... I don't know why, I don't know why it's called Brazilian, because I haven't had it there. What we have there is sugarcane juice with lime. We have sugarcane juice with the limes, which is probably a different way of doing this, because you've got your sugar and you've got your limes, so, but it's straight out of the sugarcane. It is, isn't that yeah. gorgeous? It's absolutely gorgeous. If it was white, you'd see the green. It was, it's really pretty. That just goes over a cup of ice, just like that. Yeah, this is a nice refreshing drink. And there's your refreshing drink, which will come out shortly to sort of help you with that heat you just <laughs> had, okay? <laughs> Everyone's like, okay. That looks Not that so the good. Day wasn't hot enough. We've just had that added to. All right. Okay. That's it, Tanya. That's that's it for me. I Great. think the next person next one? up is Vivi. Okay, Vivian. She's going to present. Sp is it spaghetti aglio olio e pepper pepperoncino? Oh well. <laughs> she's married. Any to Italians here? <laughs> <laughs> Pronounce that for us. It sounds Italian, so that's what it's going to be, spaghetti. Uh, it's all about the presentation. See, the boys have been working on that very well, very well done. Okay. I'm looking forward to tasting that. <laughs> I was going to ask you, how does it taste when I haven't got it out yet? Uh, all right, you're all good? Okay, so how do you pronounce this, Vivian? Spaghetti aglio olio e peperoncino. I'm not Italian, but aglio olio e peperoncino. <laughs> Thank you very much. But it translates yeah. to garlic, oil, and chili. So it's a little bit spicy. Okay, so this is going to be a quick one. This is actually a meal that I make often at home. I'm married to an Italian, so he loves pasta, and so I cook this a lot. Um, super simple, takes a couple of minutes to throw together. The longest part is the chopping, um, because you like to finely chop everything. So what I've got here is, it's Italian food. You do it with your heart, but basically I've got around a head of garlic in here and a couple of cayenne chilies. Um, you can remove the seeds if you don't want it so spicy. Take the chili out altogether if you don't want any spice. Um, I've got some parsley. Again, I grow it in my garden. So I, Hello. Can we all see me? <laughs> I grow parsley in my garden, so I just go out and pick whatever I've got and I chop it. But this is maybe about, oh, I don't know, when you go to the shops, the grocery store, and they have them in those plastic sleeves, it's maybe about two-thirds of one of those plastic sleeves worth of parsley um, and then I've strayed a little bit from I guess a traditional dish and I've, I'm going to put some halved cherry tomatoes in there but that was on the advice of my husband so he approved. Um, so that's basically it. I've pre-cooked the pasta as well so you don't have to watch me boil water. Um, make sure your water is super salty when you're um, prepping it for the boiling and then reserve some of your pasta water as well. So I've got about just over a cup here. I may not use it all, we'll see. Um, but that just helps with getting all the ingredients to emulsify and kind of stir through the pasta a little bit more. And exciting times, guys. We've got this vegan parmesan cheese downstairs, which I'm personally not vegan, but this is good. This is very good. Um, it actually smells parmesan-y. Anyway, you can come up and have a look at it later if you like, um, but that's gonna be in the shop downstairs. I will. I, well, I was going to say pop it in. I yeah. was going to finish it off with some pasta. Okay, so we are going to get started. Let's try and get this thing on. Um, not super high. Okay, let's go. Not super, super high. Um, I'm just going to start by heating up some neutral oil. This is canola, I think. Don't want to get it all over me. So we're just going to pop a little bit of oil in there. Um, also, I didn't put any salt on the ingredients, but I mean, everyone knows you flavor with salt. How's the drink, by the way? 
I think it it's okay? so good. Refreshing? <laughs> I think it's really good. Anyway, this half of the room, you will get it in a second. <laughs> but it is good. Okay, so I'm just going to get this started. I feel like pasta is one of those things that is so easy to make at home. I rarely buy it when I go out because I know how cheap and easy it is to make at home. No. Too high. We don't want it super smoky. Okay. Um, you could also add like a cream to this if you wanted to do a creamy version. That would be nice too. If you want to like cook it with some extra parmesan. Anyway, it's just whatever you like. This is, I don't actually use a recipe when I make this, so I had to make it on Friday night for dinner and guess how much, like, what my quantities are. So anyway, just use it as a suggestion. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with the garlic and the chili, get that sizzling away for a minute. Maybe not quite a minute, because this is super hot. Okay, we'll just get that started, and then we're gonna add in our cherry tomatoes. This was a punnet's worth, 250 gram punnet of cherry tomatoes. Thank you. And we're just gonna mix that all together. Your garlic should start to change color a little bit and when the tomatoes start to burst, then we're gonna add the spaghetti in. Usually, I will have this going while my pasta is boiling, so by the time this is ready, you just drain your pasta and add it in. So this pasta's been sitting for maybe an hour or so, so I'm hoping it's not all clumpy now. We'll see. So that's that, I'm gonna add a pinch of salt. They say to flavour your food in layers, so after every step, add a little bit of salt and you can adjust it as you go. It's actually, like, it's so simple. That's all you do is wait for that to cook, add your spaghetti. You add, like, a green salad and that's a midweek meal. Um, we're gonna add some protein on the side. Um, oh, sometimes we do like a, a something with chickpeas. I really like chickpeas, or something with lentils is really nice. You've got lentil patties on the side as well. That's like a protein you can add to the meal. Um, or even in the salad, add some chickpeas. Um, or tofu or something instead of like cheese in the salad. You could add basil to this if you want. I grow a few herbs in my garden, so sometimes I make a pesto, but I don't have just basil, so I'll add basil, thyme, oregano, and the parsley, and then the rest of the ingredients like you do with pesto, with garlic. I don't always have pine nuts, but I found that almonds work really good as a substitute, and they're cheaper, so that's really nice. Um, and plenty of garlic, and that makes a really nice pesto. This is why I think pasta is so easy to make at home, because it's so easy to make the toppings that go with it. Something like a ravioli takes a bit more work, so that I would probably buy out. But anyway, it is good. Okay, so we're working on getting these tomatoes to burst. They are coming together. There's no camera over this, is there, so you can't actually see what's going on. Might turn it up a tad now, just to get it faster. This half of the room, how's the drink? It's good? <laughs> I think it was so yummy. It really hit the spot earlier when we were all boiling hot in the kitchen, cooking away. It's a good refreshing one. I will definitely be adding it to my repertoire because I think it's a good one for summer. All right, we're getting a little bit of burst in these tomatoes, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add the pasta. Like I said, normally I add this straight from the pot. <laughs> it's not normally a clump. Mm -hmm. But this is also why the pasta water helps. We're gonna pop that in there. I'm not gonna use all of it. So let me just try and break this up a little bit. There we go. It's doing well. Thank you very much. So once you've chucked your pasta in there, we're gonna add the parsley. Also finely chopped. And you give that a nice stir with the heat on kind of low, just to get it all combined. 
It's one of those dishes that's the colours of Italy. You've got red and green and white in here. And so we've got the vegan parmesan downstairs, but another thing I like to use to garnish with is um, savoury yeast flakes. So what you're going to get on the sample is actually a combination of the two. We've got the vegan parmesan and it's been combined with some savoury yeast flakes. Gives it a bit more flavour um, and just makes it go further too. But yeah, you just sort of give that a bit of a stir. This is also why, I didn't point it out before, but you stop cooking your pasta a couple minutes before it's totally done because you're going to finish cooking it in here. If you let it cook all the way in the pot, then this part becomes really mushy. We like al dente pasta. And yeah, that is your meal. That's it. And oh, let me just garnish it with some parmesan. Like it grates really well too. <gasps> Can you see that? Mm -mm -mm. That's it. I'll leave this up here so you guys can take a look at it later on. Leave the pot here. Um, no, it's okay. Put it here. The pot. Mm -hmm. oh. and they can have a look. We're bringing we're bringing a sample out. But yeah, all right. Do you need this? No, no. all done. All right. Hopefully, we'll get the samples out here in a second, and you can have a squeeze and a taste. But yeah, that's it. Any questions so far? before we get to the next one. Hands. It was just dry spaghetti, yeah. So it was just a, this one was a Woolies brand spaghetti packet, 500 gram packet. I really like Varilla. Apparently it's a good Italian one, I don't know. My husband makes me buy it. Um, and I get the number five spaghetti, because with the Varilla, the spaghettis are graded. So you can get like the spaghettini, which I think is the number seven, or spaghetti number five, and I think there's also a number three. But five is like the mid-range one. It's not super thin, not super thick. <laughs> Sorry, Joe, you had a hand up there? Yeah, how long will it take to bake from beginning to end? This? Yeah. Just add the time for chopping the veggies on. <laughs> I don't know how long it takes you to chop veggies. <laughs> no more than half an hour, huh? Yeah, no more than half an hour. Definitely no more than half an hour. This is seriously like a 15, 20 minute meal idea. Um, yeah, if you've got someone else making a salad while you're doing this, then it's all ready to go. Because while the spaghetti is boiling, you can just be making the other part. Exactly, yeah. Anything else? Otherwise, are you ready to go? Yes. Okay. I'll pass you back to Lydia here. Well, we've got 15 minutes to kill. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. So do you have any questions? Opening for questions or uh, comments, feedback. Yeast, yes. Savory yeast, is that what you're talking about? Savory yeast is a, oh, what's it made of, Paul? It's, um, I'm not really sure to be honest with you. So if I tell you, it may not be the right thing. But it's very good for your nervous system. It's very high in iron. Um, it's got a lot of B vitamins in it. But what they make it from, I'm not 100% sure. I'll check for you and I'll let you know, okay? It's very nice because it gives it the cheesy flavor when you're making things. It gives you that really nice cheesy flavor. And it is very high in the B vitamin group. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just um, Paul. Do you know what it's about? Do you know what it's about? Two green pasta. A what? Two green pasta. Okay, all right then. Okay. 
Yeah, uh, savoury yeast flakes are a vegan source of those vitamins that, that you talked B. about. So, and it gives that cheesy flavour as you mentioned because with cheese, cheese as you know is a product that has under, undergone a um, cultured process and so to get that flavour, that unique flavour that you can you find in cultured things like yoghurt or, or uh, cheeses, we use the savoury yeast flakes to add that, that type of flavour that you would get from a, you know, if you have a cultured product. Some of yeah. the vegans are short in vitamin B12 and yeah. that you can get that from savoury yeast as well. Okay, that's so good. So it's yeah. rich in vitamin Bs, yeah. Um, I'm not sure what it's made of, but it's a it's a cultured product. But it, yeah, but it comes. But it's a vegan source. Yeah. Bef before you yeah. go home, we will have an answer for you tonight. Okay? We're just going to check what it's made from, and then we'll let you know. Because we have we sell it downstairs, right? We do sell yeah. it downstairs. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, before I do this last step, I would like to invite my dad. He wants to come up and have a few minutes. He's got something for you to share with you. Um, Papa, I don't think he heard me. But anyway, um, maybe after I demonstrate this, he'll come up. Okay, nutritional yeast or savoury yeast is grown f on molasses. So molasses, is it cultured on molasses? Okay, there you go. Good evening. I just want to say a few words. I want to say a few words of my own experience. If any one of you suffer from duodenal ulcer, there is hope with natural treatment. I have had duodenal ulcer twice. Once in the middle 60s, 1960s and the other time was in 1978 both times I healed it with natural treatment I found about five people who had the same problem and I passed to them the recipe how to treat the duodenal ulcer. And all five were healed. And because it was proved by my own experience and by five others that it works, I decided to put this in the book that I have written, Plants and Health. Just for those listening, it's plant uh, Alfredo, number 93. Just for those listening, what is a duodenum ulcer as opposed to other flex ulcers? Seed. But if you want to bear with me, I will read to you the recipe. Okay? It is one week treatment. For the duodenal ulcer, make a flexseed treatment as described as follows. Soak overnight three spoonful of flexseed. Flexseed or linseed. Six spoonful of bran, wheat bran in two liters of water. 
lukewarm water. Soak it overnight. In the morning, very early, you boil it. Don't cook look fast, just up to the point of boiling, and you strain it. Take one glassful every three hours of that juice. Now, it should be at 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 6 o'clock during one day. Together with that treatment, you, you have to continue that for three days. Together with that treatment, take four or five glasses of carrot juice. Three or four cups of rosemary tree, uh, tea. Two cups of passion fruit leaf tea. all in normal dose. Boil one kilo of potato unpeeled, boil it with the uh, peel, and it, has, it uh, must be water sufficient to cover it until it's cooked. And then you Take the potatoes away, give to someone else, and you drink that potato water. Now, this is done for three days. Then, on the fourth day, you stop using the flaxseed and bran. And now you replace it with kale or cabbage juice for four days. And during one week, you eat nothing because these juices and, and uh, the teas will keep you okay. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the end of the seventh day, Goodbye ulcer. There will be no more ulcer. I have had my own experience, and as I mentioned, another five one. So in this book, I put that, this recipe in. And if you know anyone that has this problem, well, recommend this to them. And this book is available here down in the shop. Thank you, Papa. Thank you very much. Okay, now back to... Were you going to say something about the ulcer, duodenum? No? Okay, we're going to have to do Yeah, I'm still quickly. asking, where, where is the du duodenum? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> is now, it stomach? Duodenum is something to do with the digestive system. L lower stomach, is it? Yes. Just past, oh, just, it. just past the stomach. Okay. Okay, thanks. Thank okay. you. Okay. All right. Well, let's back, get back to food. I should have actually asked him to come afterwards while I was cook I'll be cooking this. I didn't think of that. But anyway, what I'm doing first is I'm emptying one tin of the crushed pineapple. So is this a recipe? Sieve. Is it a recipe for this? Beg your pardon? Is there a printed recipe for this one? Yes. It's the okay. last recipe. Oh, last recipe is it? Okay. It's the last recipe for tonight. Okay, last your, recipe for tonight. Thank you. Yep. It's a pineapple, a pina colada actually, pina colada, which is pineapple and coconut pudding. Okay. So I take the water out. Now, while that is actually, is that on? Should be. It's on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Am I talking soft? <laughs> no. Okay. All right, so I'm just taking the water out. Now, with this, we're going to use the water that I've taken out. And if you want to also use the pineapple after the pudding is made, 
you can actually um, mix that through it if you like a little bit of crunch throughout the pudding or you can leave it plain. Okay. Is that better? Okay. All right. So we, it's a very, very simple recipe, very fast, very quick, and make it the day before you want it. And when, when it's uh, and put it in the fridge, and it's so nice when it's cold, really cold. It's really refreshing. All we have to do is whiz everything up and cook it up. I'm using corn flour to thicken it up. So I'm using two cups of fresh pineapples that I've peeled and cut into pieces. That's your fresh pineapple. Where's the camera? <laughs> okay. And two tins of coconut cream. Okay, two full tins of coconut cream. It's like five minutes to make it and then to cook another, say, seven minutes to cook. So for 15 minutes, you've got your pudding made, okay? Then I use one cup of um, maple syrup. And because this is 250 grams, just use one of these, okay? So that's your cup. So I'll empty that into there. Now, if you don't like it too sweet, don't put it all in. Put whatever you like. If you want it half as, half as sweet, um, I think if I'm going to have sweets, I'm going to have sweets. <laughs> so that's why I'm putting a whole cup. All right, and I'm putting in half a cup of coke, um, corn flour, just half a cup. If you make it and you find it that it's too soft and you prefer a thicker consistency, put a little bit more, put three quarters of a cup, but I like it when it's wobbly. I like wobbly things. So um, for me, that's, that's it. So this is it. That's all it is. Whiz it up and then we cook it. I'll just have to whiz it up. Sorry about the noise. Oh. Okay, I've whizzed that up and I'm going to add the, it's roughly one cup of the juice that's in here, okay? So if you want to measure it, you can, but it's roughly one cup. And just give it a quick mix. Okay, and then we just cook it up and bring it to the boil. And when it's, it's starting to boil, like I said last week, I put my phone on, five minutes, and I'll catch up with my mail, my Facebook, whatever I need to do. And you don't feel it, that five minutes has gone. Now, once it's cooked, you can actually do, um, like I said, you can actually use the um, pineapple that you've, the pineapple that you have um, taken out the juice from, or you can um, garnish with that afterwards. Well, what we did today, we garnished it with fresh pineapple and some uh, passion fruit, uh, and it'll just balance off that sweetness from the pudding, and it gives you a little sour and sweet flavour. So it's up to you what you want to do, what you feel like doing. But one thing that's important, until it thickens up, you really need to stir it, okay? You nearly need to whisk it because if you don't, it's just going to come together in one clump. It's not going to be a smooth pudding. So, um, yeah, so now we just got to have the patience when it comes to boil to stir for five minutes. Now I should have had my dad up here to explain that. But, yeah, it would have been good. It will... Yeah, it'll just, yes, it'll go lumpy. It'll go lumpy if you don't stir. So once it boils, then you don't need to keep on stirring. You can just stir it every now and then. But until then, so that's all it is. It's a very simple, now if you can't go down and buy a fresh pineapple, fresh is best, but if you can't, just use canned pineapples, frozen pineapple, whatever, it doesn't matter. You can use that instead of 
the fresh. If you, if you want to make it and you just don't have the chance to go to the shops, okay? So just use what you have. Yeah. Any questions? Whoa, I'm two minutes late. I guess you want your dessert. <laughs> you want to try it? The, the, the proof is in the taste, isn't it? The proof, proof's in the, in the taste. So yeah, we've had too much chilli tonight. We need to. We, we need, need to dessert. water it yeah. down a little bit. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. It won't be long and there'll be... Yeah, the chilli was good, Joe. Was it very hot? Was it too hot? It was all right. <laughs> but you can adjust that. You can adjust that with um, how much chilli you can put extra or you can put less. Or you, can't, you don't have to even put it in at all. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's starting to thicken a little bit. Um, it won't be long and it'll start boiling. So, yeah. Any other? Yes. You can, yes. You can use mangoes, you can use peaches. Peaches are going to be nice soon. They're, gonna, they're lovely seasonal peaches. Apricots, yeah. You can use whatever fruit you like, yeah. yeah. Just work the same ratio, whatever is on there, fruit-wise and, and the other ingredients. So if you use the same ratio, it should be fine. Um, if you're going to use passion fruit or some of the fruits that are more watery, I would increase the corn flour a little bit because there's more liquid, yeah. Okay. Everyone's very quiet. <laughs> How is the desserts coming out? They're getting there? <laughs> Let's see. They're coming. They're coming? Right. Okay. That's lovely. They're working so hard out the back, you should see. Yeah, them. we should have a camera out the they're, back that we could oh, pop up on the screen just here just amazing. to show you what they're doing out there while you're They here. really do a good job, <laughs> those kids. Really do. Here Beautiful. it comes. All right. Here's the verdict. <laughs> so what do you call this one? This pina is colada. Pina colada. Because it's got pudding, pineapple. Pina colada pudding, right? Yeah. Pineapple okay. and coconut. Pina colada pudding. Okay. So Once it starts to boil, turn it down for the five minutes. Just turn it down and then there should be... Okay. Was it worthwhile uh, waiting for? Okay. Is that okay? Verdict good? Yeah? Yep. Thumbs up for that. Yep. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Someone had some today and they said, oh, it's too sweet. Actually, it was my daughter. Mom, it's too sweet. Don't put so much... Uh, maple syrup in it, it's just, I said, you want it sweet? You have sweet. If you don't want it so sweet, then you can't, you know, it's not a dessert. <laughs> but you can reduce the maple syrup, yes. You can, yeah, but with honey, don't put a cup of honey. You'll probably put about two, uh, probably a third of a cup and then taste it, because honey is a lot sweeter. So one cup of maple syrup, replace that with one third of a cup yeah, of Yeah, I would, and yeah. try it, and then if you think it's sweet enough, okay, otherwise put a little bit more, but I'll, I'd be careful with honey, because honey, honey will also, um, not only it's a lot sweeter, but it, it'll make it more runny as well, with the corn flour. You may need to, well, if you put only a third of a cup, you'll be okay, but if you put more, you might have to put a little bit more corn flour. Yeah, see, when I look at the recipes like this, one cup of maple syrup, I think 3,000 and 55,000 calories. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> but that gave, that gave me a but big this dish. this is a dessert. This is a dessert. It gave me a big dish. The slice, you had one twentieth of that in that one slice. One twentieth. We cut it up in 20 okay. pieces. Okay, so it's one twentieth of a cup yes. that you're eating now. That's you're good. You're eating one twentieth of All right. it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but um, I think if you're going to make dessert, and if you're going to eat dessert, you've got to make it worth it. 
Otherwise, don't have yeah. it. Yeah, well, it is a dessert, so it's like something that you, you, you're not going to eat this three meal today, right? <laughs> but this is just one of those treats you might have once a, a week or occasionally. That's I don't know. It. That's it. Once a week? Yeah, that's it. Once a week. <laughs> you can actually, it really looks nice if you put it in um, like dessert glasses. Yes. And then, you know, you can really make it look nice and you can put your passion fruit and yeah. and your pineapple on top and then put some cream on top of that. Yeah, it it's looks really nice. Lovely. It and then, looks and then really together nice. with this one, it would be like, wow. Yeah, that's it. You'd charge your guests for that, wouldn't you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. You can, yeah. Put strawberries. Yeah, garnish it with strawberries. That's nice. Mm. You can put anything. Yeah. Cherries. But could you add, instead of the pineapple, could you use strawberries? Instead of the pineapple, um, it wouldn't be pina colada. No. <laughs> it would be a strawberry pudding. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 So this is purely pina colada, so anything, once you take the pineapple out, it's no more pina colada. That's exactly so, yeah, so. Yes, Irene. I would use fresh. I'd use fresh peaches. Um, you can use the tin, but it would don't put the maple syrup in then. Because you've got to then adjust the, the sweetness because the, the tin of peaches can be very sweet. This, you can actually put that in with it once it's cooked. Yeah, you can put some peaches in. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, instead, instead of this, this yes. the peaches. Yeah, chop it up. Yeah, chop it up and put it through. Yeah. If you're going to put fresh fruit through it, because this is cooked as well, the crashed pineapple is also cooked. If you're going to put fresh fruit, um, perhaps do three quarters of a cup of the corn flour. Yeah. Yeah. To, to allow for that, because the fruit will give it will give juice. The fruit will get. We've taken the juice out of this, but the fruit will give it more juice. Yeah. Wow, this that's even done. getting there, isn't it? Yeah, it's done. That's, that's done now? Yep, yep. that's ready. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to pour it out here. Actually, I might mix this with it. This one, the one you had, it was just plain. I'm going to just mix this pineapple, um, the crushed pineapple into this, and that'll give it a bit of crunch when we're going to eat it tomorrow, Paul. <laughs> yeah, if you wonder what happens with all the leftovers after the... <laughs> ends up for lunch downstairs the next day. <laughs> So we get a real treat after the cooking demos. Yep. So there we go. Oops, there's the camera. We'll just pour it into our mould. It looks very liquidy, but it will thicken up. Now, if you want to have it the same consistency as what we had with the mango, remember the mango dessert we had the first day? Oops. You can put about one and a half teaspoons of agar powder in here to make it you know, like thicker, if you like that sort of thing. But I, for this, I really like it wobbly. I do. I really like it when it's really s soft and, yep. Okay, here we go. That's done. And that will just sit there and then we're going to have it in a couple of days. Fantastic. <laughs> That's you. it? That's it. Thank you That's very much. Tonight. All right, thank you. <laughs> uh, thanks, everybody. Well, we hope you've enjoyed it. Who enjoyed it tonight? Yes, sweetheart? Great. Great. And uh, coming next week? <laughs> no. <laughs> Unfortunately, no. You don't realise how much this goes into all this, and the girls do enjoy the break. So <laughs> but they are going to have a break for a few months now because uh, this is it now for this, this year, right? For this yeah, year. so we're going to be starting up again autumn, about, around about May. autumn. May. Yeah, May, May next yeah. year. Yeah, May next year. Because yeah. uh, we do, as I mentioned already, for those who haven't been here before, it's twice a year, three Mondays running. So if you would like to be posted on when we are going to have the next one, um, well, you've got the registration there if you've signed in. Uh, if you haven't, make sure you do, and we can send you a text message or email, whatever it is, to let you know when the next one is. And if you want to um, make this at home and yet follow, up, follow along with what you saw here tonight, you see that these, uh, we have the cameras here. This is being streamed live to YouTube. 
So if you want to go back and just, oh, what, what would she actually do there again? And then mm -hmm. you can check up on the YouTube channel, which is our Schofield's Church. Just, just look up Schofield's Church and it comes up on, uh, mm -hmm. on YouTube. So it'll be, and the, the, generally the vegetarian cooking demonstrations are, because we have the sermons there as well, there is um, a, a um, playlist for the vegetarian way uh, demonstrations. So just look if out for that. Google, if you Google and you search for cooking demonstrations, you get them all there. Oh, okay. Yeah, Google. So what, Schofield's what, Church, yeah, cooking demonstrations. Yeah. Schofield's, Schofield's Church. Church and then search for cooking demonstrations and they'll come up. There you go. So, and, and the reason why we need that break, Joe will tell you, I spent Friday, I spent <laughs> Sunday, and today in order to work out these recipes for you guys. So it does take a little bit of trying and testing and, you know, yeah. to get to what we do. So we, we can't keep on doing it because... We've got other things that we... <laughs> True. <laughs> that we and they are creative, and it's like we could grab a, 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 like an off-the-shelf Woolworths cookbook or something <laughs> and present that, but, but these are kind of adaptations or little creations, innovations that, that the, um, Lydia and, the, and Tanya, Vivian, uh, Amy, Amy uh, the, uh, the others as well, spend their time uh, experimenting, trying out on us, <laughs> their husbands, if we're still alive afterwards, then they think, well, that's a goer, that one there. So <laughs> Ask and Joe, then, he's probably then, <laughs> sick of this dessert. I had like about three different types. Yeah, and that's the thing you don't realise. They try one and it's like, oh, mm, and then the second one comes. Oh, how about this one and the third one? By, the, by the third one, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes it doesn't, not even right until it's on the night. Yeah, sometimes. Mm. So it's really good. But... Um, so if you like to get copies of the recipes, obviously they're here, but the, for the old ones we will um, generally have a link for them on the YouTube channel as well. So with this now, I'd like to, are the uh, helpers there, I'd like to come out and show you all the hard work that's going on behind the scenes, we'd like to introduce you to everyone that's helping out here. So thank you. They're so shy. Good job, boys and girls. Great job. Amy I had to go home early tonight. She just me. did a couple of, like, when we were started to do the demonstration, said, I have to take the kids home because Levi wasn't feeling very well. Okay. So she So went. thank you, everybody. So some appreciation for everyone here. So thank you. And, and we, of course, we, this would not all be possible without our creator and maker, and so we just want to give him thanks. So I'd just like to invite you to bow your heads as we close with a prayer. Dear Father in heaven, once more, we thank you so much for the, for the uh, wonderful demonstrations we've had, for the uh, work that's gone into these uh, presentations, and for the, um, the uh, tastiness of them, and for the... Uh, assurance that we have lord that this is food provided from your hands for our benefit and our enjoyment and we thank you for that and so we ask you lord to take care of everyone here now as we, they go our separate ways we look forward to when we can meet again and we ask you for your traveling mercies your and keep us each one in your care and your grace until next time we meet we pray this and thank you through our lord and savior jesus amen mm. well thanks everybody for coming may god bless you don't forget um the shop is open downstairs. It's just at this end of the build, that end of the building down there. For those who haven't been, you can make your way. Just keep turning left, all right? <laughs> Go down the stairs and keep going left. You'll get to the shop. And still 10% off tonight, yes. Oh, before you go, also, just before you go, uh, my wife reminded me there is a book here, Health and Happiness. This is a... This is health, healing, and happiness from the biblical perspective. It's, if you want to find out a little bit more about these things, there's a free book on the table there, and this is presenting from a biblical perspective God's way to health and happiness. So feel free to take one home tonight. Thank you.